Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the best NASes for photo and video editors. Welcome back. So for those of you that have been Googling, chances are if you're a photo video editor, you've been told time and time and again that one of the best ways which you should be using to store your data as well as distribute your data and improve your workflow is to buy a NAS. NAS isn't new. NAS or network attached storage is the means to have a single area of storage, RAID protected, we'll get to that later. Um, you have a, a nice big area of storage that is accessible by you for editing on as well as other people all accessing the same data. Now, one of the main reasons that people use NASes for photo video editing is quite simply because of its versatility. Um, think how many times you use your USB, even Firewire and that, dare I say Thunderbolt related storage to edit your large scale media but you're the only one that can access it. One of the biggest downfalls of DAS or direct attached storage is the means that you, only one person can access it at any given time and the files that are available. And that's where NAS makes a difference. Because NAS is more similar in architecture to a whole computer, it gives multiple users the ability to access the same files at the same time. How it gets around certain things about multiple people accessing the same file, I'll talk about later on. But when you think about it, the workflow of the average photo or video editor, be it professional or hobbyist, does involve a great deal of the same file being changed, remade, distributed, and then archived time after again. The same file is accessed and changed in a multitude of ways, and wouldn't it be a lot easier if all of that was done with one machine? Now, uh, one of the main reasons that so many of you are switching to NAS, it's simply because the cost of NAS is ridiculous now. You can pick up a NAS for as little as £100, or as much as two or 3000 depending on how you want your data um, to be either be protected or distributed. Because there's a multitude of different things that you should factor in with your decision as a NAS for your photo video editing, um, like work. But I would dare I say, for the majority of this video, as much as I want to focus on people that edit 1080p and 4K, right now, the biggest field of photo video editors that seem to be really latching onto NAS is wedding photography. Now, maybe you're a wedding photographer right now and you're starting out, or maybe you've been established for 10 to 15 years with your big archive of photos and you're moving over to NAS because of you know all the promises that have been made by it. And the ability to have something to edit files on and then distribute is incredibly attractive. But it's more than that. There are several reasons why a NAS, for me personally, is better than a standard DAS over Thunderbolt USB or whatever for editing your files. First and foremost, RAID. Now, RAID protection is paramount. If you don't know what RAID is, please check out my other video, but I'll give you a really quick summary. RAID is redundant array of independent disks. It's the ability to have a device that's got multiple hard drives inside, combine all those drives into one single volume of storage, but, if one of those drives breaks like any other piece of hardware, you know, it's not infallible, then your data will be protected. Certain RAID levels give you more protection than others, and other RAID levels give you more speed than others. But RAID protection in NAS is a given. All NAS devices have RAID, unless they've only got one drive bay. So remember that. That's one, one reason to go for a NAS for your photo video editing. The second one slightly more complex. It's called NLE non-linear editing. Now most NASes are non-linear editing enabled but you have to make sure the software you're using be it you know Elements, Photoshop, even PowerDirector and stuff like that or Photoshop all of these programs the majority of them do support non-linear editing NLE but do double check first. What that means is when you are editing a file on the NAS the NAS has the original file but the software will never let you edit the original file. Even if you're using, you're editing on the NAS, you are always editing a copy. So non-linear editing means that you can completely screw up the file you're editing and it doesn't matter because there's always a copy on the NAS. And a lot of software does support this feature and functionality where it creates a duplicate for you to edit on in real time. Next, we can talk about, let's go through the next option, user-based permission settings. <coughs> and this is what brings us back to the photo video editors out there, because what you want is the ability to have um, all of your photos and your videos that you're either editing live or 
distributing on that NAS, and that's maybe it's cold storage, whatever, but you've got all of the, your archive, your years and years of archive there, and if you want users to access it, be it employees and colleagues or clients, you want them to be able to access it with login information. You want two steps verification. You want to know that they, if they don't have the login credentials, they can't get in. And moreover, you can set different credentials um, up for different users and assign a certain number of permissions to individual files and folders very easily in bulk with a NAS. What that means is, again, photo, if you're a wedding photographer, you can do multiple shoots throughout a year or, you know, of a wedding or engagement shoots, you know, the things you guys do. Then you can have all of those photos that you've edited living on the NAS and give the uh, bride and groom to be a login info, a login details and they can access those photos. You can lock it so that no one can download photos and even create payment systems with third party applications so that you can distribute it from the NAS. They've got login credentials and they can only access the folders you give them access to all the time with two step verification and login credentials that you can cater, disable, enable on time management or automatic just go, nope, no more for you. Very handy indeed. Next, encryption. You do want data to be encrypted because let's face it, this is gonna be very important. These are large files. So thanks to NASIS supporting encryption, either AES-256 or AES-NI-256 uh, encryption, the faster of the two, because that has a better instruction. Um, with encryption, it means that your data transmission to and from the NAS and while it's on the NAS is safe because you don't want someone hacking in or ransomware um, basically encrypting all of your information without you having the cipher key and then it's lost to you. NASes support that functionality in a way that store normal DAS boxes don't. Now flipping everything I just said, if you were using a USB or a Thunderbolt or whatever, one, most DAS boxes do not have RAID inside, and if they do, they cost a lot more. The RAID has to be handled by the connected computer. The result being that only that computer can access the device if it supports the RAID, because the DAS box has no brain. Secondly, encryption. There's no encryption. The CPU is not, pot it, it's not smart enough on a DAS box to support encryption. It has to be done by the connected computer, and therefore, only that computer can access it. User access permissions, sure. You can assign a, a, a password, <coughs> and a login name for that DAS box, but once again, only one person can access it and it has to be set up on the computer. So again, a NAS is a smart choice. Now, it is worth mentioning, there is one major downside to editing on NAS, and that is speed. That is only, um, traditionally only work at one gigabit ethernet. That's one gig ethernet. Now, USB is five gig, Thunderbolt is 20 gig, so they are considerably faster. But one, your software isn't going to utilize that full speed. And two, there are lots of ways to upgrade your connectivity with things like 10 GBE and PCIe expansions we'll talk about in a little bit. But when considering your perfect NAS, just remember that the NAS isn't designed to just sit there and have your files and distribute them. It, you can make the most of your investment by getting it to live within your workflow and save you having lots of things. An example, a normal workflow process of photo or video editing. So straight away, you've created your photo video um, elements. You've done that uh, on a camera, um, a camcorder, whatever, you've created your video. Next, um, with the NAS, you upload it to the NAS directly over the Wi-Fi or the network. So boom, this file is from the camera. If you've got a smart camera, the camera can do it. Otherwise, connect it to a computer, upload it to the NAS. Next, edit the files on the NAS. Whether it's 1GBE or 10GBE, which I advise, or if you're doing 4K, um, 1080p big files, edit those files directly via the NAS, and thanks to NLE, you can edit them live on the NAS. Next, one that once they're done, save them, wrap them up, and you can create backups within the NAS. Remember that, you can create multiple raids. From there, once you've got it backed up and moved into a certain folder, you can assign permissions and distribution rights to that folder. Next, email links. You can email links to the files on your NAS to end users, clients, colleagues, and more. And again, think of it, lots of you photo video editors out there use Dropbox and Google Drive and stuff like that. This is the same thing, but instead of it living on the cloud up there where someone else can get to it, this is a private NAS device. It works exactly the same, the upload is the same. You can even synchronize it with your third party clouds. So again, lots of reasons why photo video editors are using NAS these days. 
But in time, and remember, after you're done, you can archive this footage onto a USB drive that's connected to the NAS, onto another NAS on the network. You can back up in a multitude of ways. Um, now, in terms of your budget, that's going to affect the NAS you get. I think to have, if you're thinking of taking photography and videography very seriously, then you have to go for minimum the Synology DS718 Plus. And again, do go to the link in the description, which will give you all the information about the NASs I'm talking about here and where to get them at the best price. So the Synology DS718 Plus, which is around £330, give or take. This NAS doesn't have 10 GBE, but it does. it is great for editing the standard definition media, editing photos and music over the network. It's got two LANs on the rear, so you can effectively double your connectivity to it. And it's great for distribution with some excellent hardware inside. Next, the QNAP TS253B. Incredibly similar hardware to that of the Synology and actually works out a little bit cheaper, the BE. But it also has an HD, um, a PCIe slot on the rear. And what that means is you can add 10 GBE connectivity M2 SSD cache to speed up internal operations and more. It's got an HDMI port output on the rear so you can connect a monitor and use the device as a standalone PC as well, eliminating another area of your workflow. Finally, we've got ones like Thunderbolt connectivity because some NASes do have Thunderbolt on board, such as the TS453 BT3. This arrives with both 10 GBE and Thunderbolt connectivity and the device arrives at just around £900 without the VAT and it has all of the features and functionality of the 253B we just mentioned plus 10 GBE plus Thunderbolt. And then we move into the big ground. We've got ones like the Buffalo series, the Buffalo Terra Station 2 and 4 bay, very cost effective, 3 years warranty, 10 GBE and excellent replacement warranty support services. If you're looking for something that's just going to live there like a network drive so don't worry about the user interface, you don't want all the apps, definitely Buffalo Nans is the one for you. And finally, if you are looking at editing and taking it very seriously, the TVS 1282T3. It's three grand, it's not cheap. With an Intel i7, eight bays of storage, four SSD bays, so you can edit on fast storage and then move to the hard drives underneath for that archive. This is definitely the one for you. On top of that, it's got three HDMI ports for multiple outputs. It's got internal speakers, a remote control, and Thunderbolt 3. So you can connect via Thunderbolt 3 as well as 10 GBE, as well as 1 GBE. This device will support 50 users simultaneously very, very easily. And remember, if you are going to take this seriously photo video editing, that is the sort of thing you're looking at, and that's your kind of budget. So three, uh, five options there as low as 300, as high as 3,000. If you're interested in buying a NAS or learning more about what we've discussed today in more detail, visit the NAS Compare article in the description below. And do remember, if you want to buy a NAS and want to talk about it more, visit the guys at span.com or subscribe to this channel and the blog to stay abreast of all the new releases in NAS for 2018. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.